Welcome to Goobertown Hobbies, my name is Brent. Today we're talking about the color wheel and the rainbow. We've got some art, culture, science, and some little piggies. One of the reasons I love painting minis is because I love colors. Finding colors that bring a model to life is a delightful little achievement. As a kid, when I got into Warhammer, I painted Red Squad, Blue Squad, Purple Squad, and Green Squad. Fifteen years later, I finally got around to painting Yellow Squad and Orange Squad. Finishing this trip around the color wheel makes me unreasonably happy. This type of joy isn't limited to any one set of models. Last year, I painted some Mushroom Men from Trenchcoat Minis. They've got fanny packs and weaponry, and they look great when they match the rainbow. There's something special about a full pack of crayons, and there's something special about a full pack of Mushroom Men. Completing a collection of colors can feel just as rewarding as completing any other type of collection. These six are a set. They belong together, and there's nothing quite like the full rainbow. Whenever I'm working on a new paint scheme, one of the first things I do is pick out some colors that are fun and vibrant. The hardest part is narrowing the selection. Painting the armor blue means I don't get to paint it green or orange or yellow. There are lots of two or three color combos that look cool, but even then, part of me feels like I'm missing out on something. The beauty of the rainbow is that we don't have to choose. Today, I'm working on these piggies. These are from Wrath of Kings by Simon. I bought these at a second-hand vendor at Under the Dice Fest, and I think they're adorable. It turned out that there were six of them in the lot. The most basic color wheels have six colors. I think these were fated to be rainbow piggies. I'll be working on these as I natter along here. This version of the color wheel is classic. Three primary colors and three secondary colors. It's simple, symmetrical, and elegant. It combines the joys of color with the joys of knowledge. It tells us about color mixing, and it gives us a framework to understand complementary colors and contrasting colors. And of course, it's also misleading. I know people are typing in the comments about how the color wheel is wrong, and that the real subtractive primaries are cyan, yellow, and magenta. I hear ya. The more you dig into it, the more asymmetric and misleading the color wheel is. Each color has their own distinct flavor, and they're worth learning about. So by training, I'm a spectroscopist. The human visual range is a small slice of the electromagnetic spectrum. It goes from about 400 nanometers for violet to about 700 nanometers for red. Some people say that the rainbow is six colors. Other people include indigo and say a rainbow is seven colors. But really, it's a continuum. The rainbow is as many colors as you want it to be. Now check this out. Red and violet are on opposite ends of the spectrum, but they're right next to each other on the color wheel. If you go beyond red on the spectrum, you get infrared. If you go beyond violet on the spectrum, you get ultraviolet. UV and IR are quite different, but on the wheel, red and violet circle right back to each other. We think of the wheel as continuous and unbroken, but that's a lie. Our perception of colors at the intersection of red and violet is a trick of the mind. It's fascinating, and it's a clue that the wheel isn't as neat and symmetrical as it pretends to be. The biology of sight is that we have three types of cone cells in our retina. Each of these are binary sensors that can trigger when exposed to light near a particular wavelength. The three are centered around 420, 530, and 560 nanometers. Most colors that humans perceive are the result of a combination of cones being activated. But on the edges of our visual range, we perceive color based on a weak activation from only one type of cone. A green crayon is in the center of our visual range, and a red crayon is on the very edge. Biological psychology sorts this out for us. By some miracle, we perceive them as equally vibrant and important. They're just different flavors from the color wheel. In practical terms, when we try to paint different colors, we find that not all pigments are created equal. Pigments come from a variety of chemical families. In addition to their different colors, they're also different in cost, solubility, safety, durability, and opacity. Every pigment has a distinct character, and every bottle of paint has a personality. When we go to paint six piggies with six different colors, the experience is not symmetrical. Painting blue is much different from painting yellow. 
This blue paint covers well in a single coat, and brush strokes are easy to hide. Now painting yellow requires a bit of strategy, because yellow paints are rarely opaque. When I bought these piggies, somebody had already glued some sand to their bases and primed them gray. The first thing I did is spray them all over with this light brown. In addition to being a fine start for the skin and fur, this brown is also an undercoat that'll help when we're painting yellow and orange. Yellow is translucent. Seeing warm brown peeking out from under the yellow won't be as jarring as seeing cold gray under the yellow. Painting bright yellow over cold gray usually doesn't work well. Pigments are not created equal, and this is just part of yellow's flavor. Even with this carefully chosen undercoat, I'm layering up with an ochre yellow before painting on two thin coats of the vibrant yellow that I really want. I used a similar strategy for orange. Dull orange first, and then vibrant orange over the top. Meanwhile, that blue looks pretty good with a single coat, and the warm brown underneath isn't causing problems. I'm using six fun colors for the armor on these pigs, and for everything else I'm using more neutral colors like browns and grays. This should allow the six main colors to shine, and hopefully it'll avoid any distracting color combos. Blue next to fur and leather has more of a contrast than orange next to fur and leather. So context matters. The colors on Earth are not equally balanced. This means that the color wheel is also asymmetric from an artist's point of view. The Earth's atmosphere scatters the white light from our star, making the sun appear yellow and the sky appear blue. The yellow sun affects what colors look good as highlights. The blue light coming from the rest of the sky alters the color of shadows. Check this out. When we add highlights to a red object, we could mix white with a mid-tone to highlight with pink. Or we can change the hue and circle towards yellow on the color wheel. We can highlight red with orange. If we want to add highlights to a green object, we could add white and highlight with a pastel minty green. Or we can add yellow and highlight with a yellowish green. I think using yellow for highlights on green looks really cool. Red and green are across the color wheel from each other, but for both of them, moving towards yellow makes a good highlight color, and shifting towards blue can make a good shadow color. In grade school, we're taught about the color wheel. We're taught about primary colors and secondary colors. We're taught about complementary colors and contrasting colors. So much of early color theory is based around the idea that this idealized color wheel is a perfect compass for understanding light. But then, the more we learn, the more addendums there are. Each region of the color wheel is distinct and fascinating for its own reasons. The world we live in gives meaning to each of the different colors. The sun is yellow, the sky is blue, plants are green, blood is red, and fire is orange. Purple is rare, so it's the color of the king's robe. Thematically, each color has deep layers of meaning and cultural significance. These models have some nice open areas on the armor, so I'm stamping them with their star signs. Ares is red with passion and determination. Taurus is green for growth and stability. Sagittarius is purple for wisdom and nobility. Aquarius is blue with energy, clarity, and promise. Of course, combinations of colors have cultural meaning too. Red and green evoke Christmas. Turquoise and purple call to mind the Charlotte Hornets in the 1990s. And the six-color rainbow is the color palette for Pride Month, and the color palette for the Fabulous Marines event. This is year five of Fabulous Marines, and it's one of the ways that the mini-painting community celebrates Pride. It's a good time to remind ourselves how healthy and inclusive miniature painting can be. Our hobby really is fantastic. Painters are a self-selecting group of good eggs. Art thrives on the curiosity and creativity that come from an open mind. Meanwhile, bigotry requires a closed mind. The act of painting is relaxing and meditative and healing. A quiet evening of moving paint around is an opportunity for reflection and growth. Meanwhile, hatred is just an emotional dead end. Hatred is a feedback loop that raises blood pressure. Our art is a feedback loop that lowers blood pressure. I believe that the very nature of our hobby shields it from some of the hatred that exists in the world. 
The mini painting community is a real thing, and it's great. I go to a handful of conventions every year, and the people I meet are fabulous. Seriously, this hobby is filled with some of the warmest and most inclusive people that I've ever met. The community is real, it's wonderful, and I'm proud to be a part of it. Of course, the internet is exhausting. It can feel like everybody in the world is hateful and stupid and miserable. It's too easy to feel like you're alone. Well, you are not alone. We are not alone. Pride is a time to remind ourselves that there's still a lot of love in the world. We have friends everywhere, and our friends are worth fighting for. There are lots of ways to celebrate pride. In the miniature painting world, checking out the Fabulous Marines project is a good place to start. FabulousMarines.com began as a fundraiser, but it's moved beyond that to be a meeting place and a rallying point. Streamers keep the flame burning all through June and beyond. The Marines in Fabulous Marines refers to Warhammer Space Marines, but you can paint whatever you want. I'm tired of Space Marines, so this year I'm painting these cute little piggies. There are lots of different pride flags, and they can inspire some great color schemes. Now don't read too much into this, but my favorite is the classic six color rainbow. Six vibrant colors, all equal and all unique. They're all important, too. Each of them is necessary to complete the set. Four colors is fun, five colors is better, but six is complete. This version of the rainbow is a distinct color scheme, and there's nothing quite like it. I think it's delightful. Each of these piggies is unique, but together they're a full set of crayons. Happy Pride, everyone, and thanks so much for watching.